So in this video, I'm going to be going over how to replace a poker table felt, whether it's something that you've had custom already or if your table came with a suited speed cloth. This is how you can replace that plain surface uh, by removing the old one and putting on a new one. So um, I've got a couple of tools with me. First of all, I've got to take off the rail. So one of the things you want to check to make sure is uh, can your rail actually be taken off? Sometimes, depending on how the poker table is built, sometimes they don't come off. Most of the times they do. So in this case, the rail is screwed on. So I'm just going to go around and take off all the screws. So next up, you need to remove the staples. You have to remove the old felt. This one is stapled down, so you can do it two ways. You can either cut it, so you can just grab a utility blade and just cut along the inside of the staples, cut it all around, take off the old one, and leave a little ribbon of strip of uh, a felt here on the outside. Or you can do it, which you should do it, is by taking out the staples so you remove everything. Because if you have to replace this felt several times, and each time you cut it off and cut it off and cut it off, you're gonna get a layer a layered effect of felt on the outside and eventually that's going to affect how your rail sits on the table and then eventually when you have when it's so thick that the rail doesn't sit anymore you have to remove it now you have to remove three four five layers of felt and staples so you might as well just do it every single time you replace the felt and this here is just it's a uh, heavy duty staple remover. Uh, you can get these on Amazon, uh, you can get them online. Uh, you do not want a regular uh, office style stapler, staple remover, uh, you want a heavy duty one. I'll link it in the video below if you want to get one. staples have been removed we can go ahead and pull off the felt so it's gonna be easy you just grab the phone on end and pull it off you'll notice this sound it is because the felt is glued down to the foam so we're gonna do that again when we install the new felt so we'll put this aside for now you'll also notice that the foam is trimmed short of the plywood so we do that because that's where the rail is going to sit and then that little step of going from foam to no foam and hit the rail when cards come along it'll hit the rail and not slide underneath the rail just in case your rail isn't sunk down 100 percent so we're going to grab the new felt lay it down on the table if you get your felt in the mail and it's folded up in a package um, you might want to iron it up first just put it on a low to medium setting flip it upside down so you want to be ironing the reverse side to get out any big wrinkles. Any small, tiny little wrinkles, those will come out when you install the felt because you're going to give it a little pull and that's going to pop those wrinkles right out of the felt. So the rail for this table is actually has a, uh, it has a rail lip. So it's got an extra little section that's going to go over and past. So if we want to, we can install this felt all the way to the edge, cut it flush with the edge of the table and staple it wherever we want. Um, that's a little bit extra. I like to go a little bit shorter than that, mostly because of the cup holders as well as these bolts that hold down these kickstands here for the table. But you can go all the way to the edge of the table if you don't have any of that stuff. So now we're just going to measure to make sure that everything is centered. So I'll usually start with the ends. You don't have to start with the ends. You can start with the, the sides if you like. So I'm using the bedding line as a reference point. So I'm at 12 and a quarter there, and I'm at 13 and a half here. So I'm going to come this way a little bit, 
until we get it completely even. So just get it until it's even. Well enough. Pretty close. So I notice I'm a little tiny bit off. It's really hard to pull the felt just enough so it's like so so that you get that little tiny one eighth of an inch. So a good trick is once you get it close and you're trying to move it over to one side, just put your hands on it and push it over like that. So you put pressure and squeeze and it just creates a little wrinkle and it'll actually pull it over about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. So now I'm at twelve and five eighths and 12 and 5 8 so we're good now we're going to go across this side and do the same thing so now it's nice and centered so what we're going to do is we're going to tack it down right down the middle one on the far side and one on the close side and on one end So I've got a pneumatic stapler here. You can use a staple gun, a regular staple gun will work. Uh, the length of staple that I'm using is uh, one quarter inch. So these are too long that was in here. So good thing I checked. So I'm just using a strip of one and a quarter inch staples. You don't need anything very long. Of course, make sure that it's not longer than the thickness of your plywood that you're, that you're going into. So we're gonna just take a, a rough middle spot. I'm just gonna use this line here as a reference. And I'm gonna give it a very, very small tug and pop in a staple on an angle. So the reason I do that is so that a little bit of it here is sticking out so it's easy to pull out later because these are just temporary. So I'm gonna go across this way, same thing, very small tug on an angle. Little tug here on an angle. So now, I'm gonna glue it down. This is 3M77 spray adhesive. Uh, this stuff's really good. They also have a 3M90. That stuff's a little bit too strong. Anything lower than 77 is not quite strong enough. So this one's a really good one. Um, it comes out as a mist, um, but you wanna move fast when you're spraying this stuff. As well as you wanna make sure that you don't get any bubbles. You don't want blobs of glue coming out on your table. So you have to make sure that your nozzle is clear. If it's gummed up, you wanna peel that off with your fingernail and make sure that it's spraying clear. So usually I'll go into garbage can and I'll spray a little bit to make sure that it's coming out clear before I do the actual spray on the table. So we just peel this back halfway and make sure there's no debris on the table at all. So you want to make sure you sweep the felt and the foam. You can use an air compressor if you have it. You can use a lint brush if you have that. This just came off the roll, so it's quite clean. And we just removed the old felt, so there's no reason for any debris to be on the foam here. So everything looks really clean, so we're gonna go ahead and spray. So I'm just gonna test it out first, make sure that it's not blobbing. And then when I spray, I'm gonna do it from about 12 inches high, not too low. And I don't want to see the actual spray on the felt. I don't want to see a big puddle. It just has to be a very nice light mist. And I keep moving. You don't want to stop. Go over the foam and the felt. That's it. That's all you need. Now we have to let that tack up. You don't want to take the cloth and put it down right away. Uh, it takes about 60 to 90 seconds for this stuff to activate. So once it gets in contact with the air, it's going to react and it's going to get stickier. So if you just pulled it over right away, uh, it's not going to stick very well. Um, it's not also not going to be a permanent bond. It's not going to be something where you put it down and you're going to ruin the felt if you peel it back off. You saw earlier where we took off the old felt, it's the same procedure that happened here. Um, as well as when you put it down, if you need to readjust, you can peel it back and put it back down. It's no problem. So we've given that a few seconds here. Notice a little, little tiny bit of debris. It's actually on the outside, so that's not going to get under the felt, so that's okay. But might as well take it off since we're here. 
Great. So then you just come over and put down and pull the sides, get straight, and then measure. Make sure you're measuring from not a cup holder. <laughs> So I'm a little bit out, I'm too far over this way. So I'm gonna lift it back up and put it back down, kind of pulling it over this way a little bit. Measure again. Too much. There we go, we are even. Make sure that this is still the same as it was before and it's good. So now we can go ahead and tack it down, put a little bit of pressure on it to make sure that it's really down. So start in the middle and fan outwards and that will give it a, a nice stick. So it's gonna be harder to pull up now. all good okay now we're going to come to this side pull up the staple and do the other side all right so now that we've sprayed this side we can go ahead and pull it back Measure again. A little bit out. Just kind of pull just ever so slightly on the sides. Not good, we are even. And I'm the same as I was on that side, so we're good. So again, go in the middle and just fan it out. Put a bit of pressure that will really seal in that glue. You also want to make sure there's no wrinkles when you're doing this, so this helps push out any of the wrinkles. And then you go back to your stapler and pack it down. Now that one's a permanent staple. Now you just go around and staple the rest of the belt. Um, whenever you're stapling, you always want to split the difference. So I've got a staple in the four corners now. So now I want to go between this staple and this staple, lift it up, give it a bit of a pull, just just you know a very little tiny bit of pull, and put one there. Same thing between here and here. Go in the middle. Make sure I'm not going into a cup holder. So I got a cup holder here, a cup holder here. lift up a little bit give it a slight pull it's not going to pull much because the glue is already kind of activating so even if you pull too much it's not going to do anything and you don't want to pull a ton because you can end up pulling the cloth too much and deforming that bedding line so before you go with too many staples what what uh, a good idea is actually to look down the line of the bedding line to make sure it's straight so if you just kneel down and look down the line you can see that it's nice and straight and that's when you know it's okay to put down the rest of the staples and again, splitting the difference, making sure I avoid the cup holder, or you actually do the cup holder on purpose in advance so that you don't accidentally go through a cup holder. And what would be really bad is if your hand's underneath. So right there's a cup holder, just put in three staples. Good. Now that you've got, you know, I would say about every six to eight inches apart you've got a staple, you can go ahead and staple the rest. So now the same thing, you just give it a, a little bit of a pull. You don't want to have any slack in here. That's it. We've got a staple about every half.
half an inch to three quarter inches apart. You don't really need this many staples, but you don't want to have too few to the point where the cloth could pull back. So you want to make sure it's well fastened. Then you just have to cut the felt. That's it. Now you can put your rail back on, screw it down, and you're finished. Once that's all screwed in, you want to make sure you do a card test. So grab a deck of cards and pitch them across the table. Make sure you don't have any cards that go underneath the rail. Go on either side. So if you have any cards that slip underneath the rail, that means that it's not screwed down properly in that one spot. So I've got a couple of hangers here, so I'm going to come back around and screw down a little bit closer there. All right, that's good. Oh, and just a quick example of how good this felt is, you can pitch from one end to the other. This is a seven foot table and it can go across no problem. Oh. <laughs> and we're done. Pull out the kickstands. Finished belt, perfectly centered. Thanks for watching.